the whole of human history is full of secrets and mysteries. In fact, even now, in the age of science and technology, our whole world order is causing thousands of questions, many of which cannot be fully answered by scientists. The Time Puzzle crew tries to uncover some of those mysteries surrounding the mysterious places of Kazakhstan. In today's episode, archaeologists against treasure hunters. How can we preserve history? Who found the golden hideout of the Black Diggers? The hidden treasures of Verne merchants and the Cossack Atamans. Truth or myth? How to search for treasures? There is a lot of historical examples when someone got rich in a moment due to the fact that he found the treasure. Such events inspired a huge number of people to search for treasure. The interest of treasure hunters is fueled by reports that huge riches have been discovered at some particular place. As for example, the treasures discovered in the Polish town of Sroda Slaska in 1985. 3,000 gold coins, jewelry and crown were found in the foundation of the building. The treasure was estimated at $150 million. And there are a lot of such sensational discoveries all over the world, including in Kazakhstan. A huge territory where generations of nomads lived, where trade routes from different countries crossed, where a huge number of cultures crossed and power was changed repeatedly, certainly keeps untold wealth to this day. Some have already been found and some are still waiting for their new owner. Watch in today's episode of The Time Puzzle where the legends about treasures in the city of Almaty and the surrounding area come from. How many gold men we have now? About four or five. Why did the opinions of scientists and researchers differ? Some believe that this land holds a lot of untold riches, while others say that these are only beautiful legends. I can say absolutely positively that there were no treasures in the territory of the city at that time. What happened to the values of wealthy people who lived in the city during the change of power in the century before last? The probability that there are hidden treasures somewhere, it is quite high. The only question is, where exactly? Watch all these and many other things right now in this episode of The Time Puzzle. Thousands of legends, hundreds of maps, dozens of people who got rich in a blink. But there are also fateful events in history, a lot of mysticism and unsolved mysteries. Nothing causes such interest as the search for hidden treasures. My name is Andrei Slojan, this is The Time Puzzle, and today we will find out whether there are hidden treasures in Almaty. Before we go to the exciting search for treasures, we need to understand what is the treasure and what is the archaeological find. Archaeological artifacts are as a rule tools, ceramics, arrowheads or the remains of dwellings. For historians and archaeologists, such items are undoubtedly treasures since they carry immense information about ancient people, their identity, culture and life. Here is how, for example, archaeologist Ruslan Shebaev describes such findings. On the territory of the city of Almaty, only two altars were discovered as a result of archaeological research. All the other altars, all that were found, they are considered treasures. Here is the first and the oldest. Well, not the first one, but one of the oldest treasures was found on the territory, on the territory of the Senatorium of the Ministry of Internal Affairs. First in Tosib, then at the Senatorium of the Ministry during construction. There were the treasures of this Saka period. A treasure of coins was found, two of these coins, which were the Almaty inscription. They are also treasures. And all these artificial boilers, bronze cauldrons, they are all treasures. There are about 20 treasures, these bronze items. 
In the understanding of an ordinary person, a treasure is a kind of wealth, coins, gold, silver jewelries, hidden from prying eyes, and if you find them, no doubt, you will get rich immediately. But very few people know that in most cases, such objects are also archaeological finds. Despite the fact that they are made of precious metals and stones, their historical value is much more important than material. For example, as it was with one treasure about which we were told by Kamit Aitkul, the head of the Center of Archaeology of the Central State Museum of the Republic of Kazakhstan. In the Central State Museum, there are many such treasures or finds. In comparison with Central Asia Museum, many of them are golden items. That is, it is a treasure of Jailaul, Kagalin, Chiri Krabat. I can almost say throughout the territory of Kazakhstan. Directly connected with the Almaty and Almaty region are the Jailaul and the Kagalin treasures. Both treasures contain more than 300 items made entirely of gold. And the first of them in chronology is the Jailaul treasure. It was found in 1988. It was in the spring. School children of the village of Jailaul have found several gold jewelries. Jalaul treasure was discovered in the Kagan district of the Almaty region in 1988. According to historians, golden items were hidden by black diggers in the early 20th century from the Saka burial mounds. 627 items, including jewelries, horse harness, gold crown and other treasure of nomads who lived on the territory of the Jetisu in the 5th, 3rd centuries BC. Black diggers put treasures in a sack and buried it in the ground. Most likely this was done for the purpose so that later they would return and pick up the treasure, but the plans of the robbers of the mounds were destroyed by ordinary schoolchildren who accidentally discovered the hideout. Now all this magnificence is exposed to the review of Almaty residents and guests of the city. A similar situation with the discovery of another significant treasure for history occurred with the world-famous Golden Man. How many Golden Men we have now? About four or five. The first one is Sik, the second Otra or Ratirao, the third the Eastern Kazakhstan. We have a lot of royal burial mounds. These barrows, unless of course they are robbed, very good, excellent materials are stored, from which we can obtain very interesting information. Nevertheless, despite the loss of historical value for the country, illegal treasure hunters continue to conduct illegal excavations of such burial mounds, not being scared by serious criminal sanctions. There is a real risk of going to jail from three to seven years. This is for real. It is written in our law on the protection of cultural property, including archaeology and material culture. However, it is worth mentioning that the law does not prohibit the search for treasures in places that are not archaeological objects officially protected by the state. Anyone can devote their free time to the search for treasures from legends, which are quite popular among the inhabitants of one of the largest mega cities of the country. The city of Verni was one of the centers of trade in Jetisu, where wealthy people lived. They kept their manufacturers and stores here. Merchants in the first guild, in modern terms, they were dollar millionaires. There are many theories and legends that these rich people could hide their values. But where? At that time in the city, there were several great merchants. Amanjol, Ayukin, Iskak, Gabdul Valiev, the Shakvarostov family, but one of the richest was Nikita Pugasov. Assured by historians, he lived and worked mainly in Tashkent. Nevertheless, he had trade shops and a house that he often visited in the town of Verni. Pugasov mostly had business in Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. 
He had his shops in Kulja and Urumqi. However, his main production was concentrated in the city of Lapsensk. There are many legends about this merchant and his riches. So according to one of them, at the time of the change of power in the region, Pugasov was warned that the Reds expropriate the values of the well-off people of the region. The merchant managed to hide some of the golden chevrons, according to one version in the house, according to the other near the house. Nevertheless, it was not possible to conceal everything and nevertheless he was subjected to expropriation. The legend is passed on to each other by word of mouth and all would be nothing but there is one catch. Soviet power came to Verny in 1918 and Nikita Pugasov died on April 22, 1911 in Tashkent. According to historians, they could still hide some of their wealth. This opinion is shared by the local historian Vasily Lazarevsky. Naturally, most of the riches were expropriated. Did they manage to hide the rest or not? The probability that there are hidden treasures somewhere, it is quite high. The only question is where exactly? The here says and rumors about the merchant's wealth only fuel the interest of treasure hunters to the Pogasov family. Basically, they rely on one document where, according to historical data, only 100,000 rubles were withdrawn from the Pogasovs from 1918 to 1920, while from Gabduvaliev a million of rubles was withdrawn. The treasure hunters ask only one question, where is the rest? After all, according to another legend, Pugasov was so rich that even once he set wits to another rich man in the city of Lapsensk of that time. The details of this competition were told to us by the archpriest of the Holy Ascension Cathedral. It was a prosperous place, merchant city. There was the fair. There is a story about how Bai Bulen competed with the merchant Pugasov right there. One burned 100 ruble banknotes in the samovar. It was a lot of money. And the other drove his cattle and said that now my cattle will drink the whole river. And here is such a half-legendary story about how rich people lived. However, this opinion is not held by everyone. The writer, journalist and local historian Vasily Shupakin believes that Nikita Pogasov could not be so irresponsible about money and this story with a samovar is just another base about rich people and their entertainments. Pugasov was Pugasov was such a God-fearing man, so decent man, that he simply would not allow himself to burn money. And money in any state, under any regime, is an especially protected object. Pugasov could not do it and should not have done it. These people were, their creed was, honor is more expensive than benefits. It turns out that the legend of the casket with Pogasov's gold is just a beautiful myth. However, history knows a lot of cases when people hid their values for various reasons. The change of power, war and revolution. Thus the treasure hunters put forward theories that the white commanders could also hide or take with them untold treasures. Relying on one of the legends, it is possible that the next character of the program could leave huge wealth in a certain hideout. Ataman Anenkov, the most controversial figure in the history of Jatisu. For some, he is a talented commander and organizer, and for others, a bloody despot. Anenkov, Ранче служил здесь. Anenkov used to serve here. He served in the 1st Cossack Regiment of Yermak Timofeyevich. He's a brilliant rider. He swung his sword brilliantly. He commanded a regiment. Then there was a colonel, Peter Nikolaevich Krasnov. He was also a brilliant rider. When the revolution started, Anyankov came from Siberia here and brought his Black 100. Well, gradually he created the division. 
In December 1918, Anenkov's troops began to arrive in Semirechia. They consisted of, as they said at the time, 1,800 bayonets, 1,770 sabers and six artillery pieces. Личность во всех смыслах легендарная и в плане в хорошем и в плане в нехорошем. Это классический русский офицер, получивший два образования. He really was a legendary person, both in good and in bad ways. This is a classic Russian officer who received two educations. He fought. He fought well during the First World War. He was awarded the Order of Honor of Three Degrees, Svetoslav of the Second Degree with Swords, the Order of St. George, and so on. This man was highly educated, well read. He was a total monarchist, I think, to the bone. But at the same time, it somehow cracked his brain a little. Excuse me for slang in the wrong way. That is, he really had some quite bloodthirsty affairs, and he punished with terrible anger those who resisted. Indeed, both the mass shootings weren't unusual and some savage executions. It is said that Ataman Aninkov could hide his treasure in the vicinity of the city of Rida. There is even one legend about this. A mother and a child went for a walk. The boy ran ahead and fell into the hole. It was a cave. There were hidden golden coins, weapons and various statuettes. The boy took one of them and brought it to his mother. But suddenly a great downpour began. Mother and child hurried home, agreeing to return here next time. But as often happens in such legends, the second time they did not find the place. And the statuette was kept in the family for a long time until it was sold to the visiting buyer of antiques. In another version, there was also a cave and there is even its approximate description. Allegedly, it was so large that it could accommodate 60 horses. Aninkov ordered to put there some of the weapons, an archive of his troops, uniforms and gold. The entrance of the cave was blown up, but a certain identification sign remained there. According to the treasure hunters, near this mountain or on its top there is a cubic stone with Arabic characters. Yeah. Yes, Aninkov transported some stolen things. Accordingly, he understood that in China he could be captured. Therefore, it is certainly possible to assume that he did not take away everything. Then do not forget that Aninkov had artillery. Suppose it was not big, but there were heavy cannons and it was virtually impossible to transport it across the border in the area that he passed. Naturally, he made the hideouts. The fact that it is convenient for the resumption of hostilities also confirms the speculation about the creation of the cache. History knows a lot of such hiding places, from ancient wars to modern ones. Nevertheless, Aninkov did not manage to use this cache. He was arrested in 1921 year by the Chinese government, I think with the goal to confiscate everything he had, but he was an adamant man. Well, in the end, in 1926, in collusion with one of the Chinese generals, there was one of the first successful attempts of our Cheka, the Chinese general betrayed Anenkov. Well, then there was a quick enough trial and execution. There is another legend which tells of another Ottoman of the Cossack army, Alexander Dutov, who could hide the values, leaving the city from the Reds. At least people claim that he possessed a very rare icon from the town of Verni. According to the legend, they had a Tabian icon of the Mother of God one of the most important icons, along with Kazan and Tikmin. It was an icon well known in Russia. For a long time people were thinking that it was somewhere in Lapsinsk. However, in 2012, far away in Australia, I managed to meet an old deacon from Melbourne, who was from Chinese immigration. And he told that before the Cultural Revolution, back in the 50s, he saw this icon in one of the Chinese temples. 
Dutov was acquainted with Anenkov. Moreover, according to the story of the hereditary Cossack and honored culture worker of the Republic of Kazakhstan, Vitaly Bakurevich, Dutov and Anenkov had tense relations. He is no stranger to this story. Aninkov committed atrocities there. He was very brutal, up to the point that he was chasing the Kazakh kids to hit them by his car. Well, he was a sadist. And my grandfather wrote a report to Kolchak on Aninkov's atrocities. Aninkov learned about this and ordered him to be shot. But the paper came from Omsk saying that Aninkov mustn't touch my grandfather. He was forbidden to do it. Dutov shared this sphere of influence with Aninkov. Aninkov commanded military operations and Dutov was the administrator. My grandfather was in his administration division. Also, some treasure seekers make assumptions that Alexander Dutov could take some of Kolchak's gold to China. By the way, these values are still not found. Thus, according to historical data, the troops of General Kapel in 1918 recaptured part of the Russian Empire's gold reserve from the Bolsheviks. Forty wagons of precious metal were transported from Ufa to Omsk. Part of the wealth went to Kolchak. The fate of these values is still a mystery. But some treasure hunters suggest that Kolchak could secretly transfer part of the gold to Dutov, since he in turn was among the first to support Kolchak, joined the Russian army of the admiral and was in good standing with him. But this version crumbles overnight. It is only necessary to raise historical documents that refer to the retreat of Dutov's troops after the seizure of Omsk. Ataman was defeated by the Reds at Aktubinsk and with the remnants of the Cossacks was forced to go in winter through the steppes of Kazakhstan, feeding on their own horses and camels, spending the night under the open sky. This digression went down in history as the hunger campaign. Dutov's people came to Semirechye in a deplorable state. Almost 90% of the soldiers were sick with typhus, Arenkov met them hostilely. Dutov was the Ataman of the Orenburg Cossack army. Accordingly, he also had his own people, but they were not so brutal like the Arenkovs. And so they had a conflict before leaving for China. That is, they moved to China already separately. Dutov lived in poverty in China and sold personal things to buy his own food. His soldiers did the black work, working for locals. Hardly having Kolchak's gold, Dutov would have lived like this. Nevertheless, despite such conditions, he was preparing to return to Semirechye and beat the Reds out of this region. The Bolsheviks learned about this and decided to steal the Ataman or liquidate him right there. For this, they developed a special operation. On this event, Shaken Aymanov produced his film The End of Ataman. Dutova. Dutov was shot somewhere in 1921 or in 1922 in Xinjiang. There the Czechs sent their own probe team, several people. Here is the film The End of Ataman. Among the novice treasure hunters, there is a legend that supposedly Trotsky could hide his values here. Very few people know, but this revolutionary figure really lived in Almata for a while. This legend is the least like the truth. If historians still allow any possibility of exporting valuables with Ottomans, with Trotsky everything is as one breaking this theory. Trotsky was here for a long Trotsky was not here for long. He didn't have any tasks to do here. He seemed to be in such an honorable link, while his fate was decided what to do with him, expulsion from the country. He was engaged, as well as Fumanov in his time, hunting, fishing and horseback riding. He was traveling, looking around, speaking fiery speeches. 
Then Trotsky, as one of the leaders of the first Soviet state of socialists, victorious Bolshevism, would not be allowed to walk in and say things like, let me take your valuables from the inventory and send it all to Moscow. No, Trotsky was on par with Stalin, but considered himself above him. It was a small job for him. In addition, at that time, Trotsky was one of Stalin's main opponents. To avoid this, Joseph Vissarionovich sent him to Almaty. There were workers of NKVD who were assigned to keep tabs on Trotsky. At first, he was settled somewhere in the Border Guard College. There were apartments of OGPU workers. Then, after all, he was nevertheless relocated here. He lived in apartments that are now located behind the Otra Hotel. But he was limited to space in the area of 15 kilometers from the point of residence. With the advent of Soviet power in this region, a large number of rich and wealthy people fled from here. Certainly it was impossible to take out all the values at once. Therefore, there were such hiding places. According to the same researchers, these hideouts have one common feature. The treasure also implies a concept like not only to hide, but also to take it out quickly. If it's easier to take, well, for example, it's easier for you to go with a bag, let's say for the yard of the house, or look for it under the foundation, than, for example, to go through the whole village. At night, an occasional passerby can be met and so on. While there are often legends, wells, but the wells are kind of twofold too. From the point of view, again, it is quickly, however, it is a little bit inconvenient. They needed landmarks in order that later they could find this place. Typically, the treasure was buried near large trees or stones hidden in the sheds of their houses or in attics or chimneys. There were a lot of caches. Often the values were buried in the cemetery in children's coffins. It was an ideal place in terms of inconspicuous concealment of values and quick search. History knows more than one occasion when in the guise of a funeral they hid their goods. The people of Lapsensk. I heard such an interesting story from them that in the early 90s a certain foreigner came to them. It was amazing. As it is a border zone, foreigners did not visit it. In one of the two cemeteries of Lepsinsk, he unearthed a children's grave, took something from there, and then he left. And as it turned out, there was no burial at all. There are a lot of such Cossacks hideouts in the mountains. Maybe there was something there. Well, who knows this now? A lot of interesting things are found on the territory of the modern city of Almaty and its environs. According to historians and archaeologists, this region was inhabited in the Bronze Age. This is confirmed by various artifacts that do not bear financial profit, but for history they are priceless. But there are also cases in archaeology where the historical value and the nominal value of an artifact are almost the same. These are ancient products from precious metals and stones. The black diggers hunt for such treasures all over the world. For example, a treasure from the Bulgarian city of Panagurishta. It was discovered quite by accident in 1949 by three brothers who harvested clay for bricks. As soon as they began to dig, something shiny appeared from the clay. The brothers took out a vessel of gold, followed by another, then again and again. In total, nine vessels, cups and dishes were brought to the surface. The total weight of the find was nine kilograms. According to scientists, these subjects were at least 2,000 years old and belonged to one of the Thracian kings. This find cannot be estimated in terms of money because the items are very rare and ancient. And there are a lot of such cases, including in our country. Let's remember the Golden Man, Jalaul and Kagalin treasures.
One of the most unique treasures from an archaeological point of view, they're all unique. The Kagala diadem found in Kagali. Kagali diadem is a jewelry from the headdress of a priestess who was buried presumably in the 2nd, 1st century BC. Only two side fragments of the diadem are left. The central part could not be found. It was discovered quite accidentally in the mountains of Transili Alatau at an altitude of 2300 meters above sea level. It was found in 1939 and the hunters found it. They went hunting in the mountains and in one such little cave they discovered a treasure. Then they brought it, handed it over, went to the police. And that's why it survived. But there are lots of treasures that disappeared. Kagali diadem has really interesting story. This is the story of the Usun myth on the headdress. It was a headdress with this stripe. And there, besides this, there were a lot of rings. The rings were with, well, they were decorated with stones. There were rings, earrings in the shape of camels. There is such a plot, a rat devours some animals. For a long time, scientists did not know what the plot on the gold diadem means. However, recent research has helped to decipher it. It turns out that it depicts the symbolism of the ancient cult of the mother goddess and god of fertility Dionysus. According to the researchers, this kind of cult could come to nomads along the Great Silk Road. In addition, as some archaeologists suggest, these deities are immortalized in gold for good reason. People already knew then that this precious metal does not react to an aggressive environment, it is not subject to corrosion and the process of decomposition. Gold did not take the first place in their lives, it's just a yellow metal and they wanted to contribute to this yellow metal, let's say, to write down their history and culture on it. Gold is, how to say, a carrier of information, not a decoration. This is the carrier of information. I say it again. This is the property of the people and not the property of one person. Despite the fact that archaeologists are people of science, some of them have their own superstitions. It's not for nothing that there are legends about the evil fate that haunts those who touches the ancient tombs. For example, the most well known about the curse of Tutankhamun. Perhaps, therefore, someone arranges special rituals before excavation, for example, sacrifices a ram. Be that as it may, there is still room for mysticism and incomprehensible phenomena, even among true scientists. <laughs> As usually, we were engaged in excavations, and at quarter to twelve, bang, we found gold. Before that, we had been working on these excavations for two months. We did not even think that we would find anything interesting. Well, supposedly, we thought that it could be the ancient Turks, let's say. But on that very day, at that hour, we found this gold, our first gold. And we just moved downwards and found the Hanites. I think that it was also connected with mysticism. It could have been a day earlier or a day later. Why exactly on that day, on the day of the archaeologists, did we find this gold? Although we worked there for two months or more. According to historians and researchers from around the world, there are many treasures that have not yet been found. Treasure hunters and adventurers give up everything. Work, families, friends and go in search of these values. There is a lot of excitement around the Inca gold or the tomb of Chinggis Khan, where according to legend, innumerable treasures are also hidden. In pursuit of such semi-mythical wealth, people spend not only incredible money for the purchase of equipment and maps, but also tens of years of life. 
and only a few of them find the coveted trophy. Most die in poverty, debt, disappointment and oblivion. Treasures, jewelries, all sorts of hiding places. Probably there is no more mystical and interesting topic for history lovers. Every year there are more and more devices that simplify this search for these riches. For sure, more than once we will come across sensational headlines in the press that untold treasures have been found. But as they say, if you want to get rich on treasures, open a store for treasure hunters. My name is Andrei Slozhin. It was the Time Puzzle. See you.